everyone. Thank you for the opportunity um, for me to present my results during this very nice conference. Um, I currently work as a postdoc in the group of Eve Breers at Ghent University and uh, group of Susanna Druliskawa at University uh, of Wrocław. Um, if you were uh, this summer uh, at the VOM conference, uh, there was this rec recurring joke that um, actually LIGO should be a sponsor of this conference because so many speakers were comparing us playing with the building blocks of pages to children playing uh, LIGO with their building blocks. So I actually would like to tell you one of these uh, LIGO stories uh, in the context of Klebsiella phages and their receptor binding proteins. So receptor binding proteins, uh, RBPs, uh, as you probably all know, uh, can have a form of uh, tile fibers or tile spikes. And tile spikes normally have enzymatic activity. And focus of this project is on RBPs with the polymerizing activity, but I will short, shortly just call them RBPs and uh, I will be meaning this one with the polymerizing activity. So RBPs of Krebsiella phages, um, they are highly specific um, to one capsular serotype only, uh, while uh, Klebsiella, uh, between Klebsiella species, we can um, distinguish at least 78 capsular serotypes. How can we uh, distinguish phages uh, having this specific RBPs? Very easily, when we have a look at bacterial alone, we can see that around this lysis zone, there will be semi-transparent halo zone, which will be growing in diameter. Oh no, <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> so it will be growing in diameter, but uh, lysis zone will stay uh, the same during the time of incubation. And this uh, halo zone is effect of the polymerization of the capsule, uh, which is done to allow the phage to gain access to the surface and to proceed with the phage propagation further. Okay, so let's have a closer look at such RBP. Um, RBPs we can divide into uh, at least two mine building blocks. First building block, which I will later on call ANHOR. And this building blocks, block is highly conserved among phages belonging to the same um, group. And it will allow the RBP to be attached to the uh, phage tile. A second building block, I will call it later uh, <coughs> enzymatic part. Uh, and this um, is actually building block responsible for actual host specificity. And it's uh, highly specific. So this uh, building block we can subdivide into two more building blocks, uh, central enzymatically active part and C-terminal domain, which is responsible for folding and receptor recognition. And when we have a look uh, on phage evolution, we can see that when the phage wants to switch the specificity, he will exchange the enzymatic building block with the blue arrow, and he will keep the unhoring building block untouched to allow the attachment to the phage tail. Uh, and then the specificity of the phage will be switched. What can also happen uh, is that the phage can extend the specificity by gaining additional uh, RBP uh, and gaining double specificity. Interestingly, the second RBP will not be directly attached to the phage tail, but indirectly through our RBP number one, through so-called branching domain marked with blue arrow. Okay, this evolution can go even further and there are already phages, uh, Klebsiella phages described with multi-capsular specificity. And then when we have a look at their uh, RBP system, it's very complex. And uh, actually, if by any accident, any of you has have in your collection a Klebsiella phage multi-capsular specific, I would be super interested to have a look at <laughs> this RBP system. If you would, uh, would be interested, please let me know. Uh, evolution can go also in other direction. So we see phages which lost part of the RBP uh, responsible for the host recognition, and then they also lost the capsular uh, specificity, specificity to, to this particular capsular serotype. So um, when we did this analysis in silico and distinguished theoretically separate domains, we were not sure if actually the, this analysis is correct and if we can mimic this uh, happening in the lab. And uh, we wanted to um, confirm the function of separate domains in 
in this phage evolution. For that, we created some engineered phages and we had some nice uh, synthetic biology tool. It was versatile. Uh, it is a tool developed in-house. Uh, it's DNA assembly method, similar to Sevatile, uh, presented yesterday by, by Rob. Um, in the first step, we take our protein of interest and we divide it into building blocks. And in the second step, we can play actual Lego with it. So assemble it in predestined order. Um, like that, we created our chimeric RBPs. Um, to insert this chimeric RBP to the phage on a DNA, uh, DNA level, we had to insert this modification. So we used one of uh, DNA assembly method or Gibson assembly, which is enzyme based or uh, gap repair cloning using yeast uh, cells. And okay, uh, let me tell uh, two stories. Um, first story will be about N-terminal building blocks. Uh, so about unhoring building block of RBP1 and this little conserved uh, N-terminal building block of uh, RBP number two. <clears throat> so uh, we had four phages in our collection. Three of them were podophages and one was cephophage. We took, of course, the RPPs and divided them into building blocks, as you, I hope, remember, Arnhor and enzymatic part. And then we actually played Lego with them, so we assemble them in all possible uh, variants. And when we checked for the specificity, what we saw, it was that each time the chimera was specific to the same um, capsular serotype as the enzymatic part only. So the unhoring building block did not bring any additional specificity to the chimera. For instance, if we have a look on this chimera, when we um, fused the unhoring building block originating from K11 specific RBP with K3 enzymatic um, part, the chimera was K3 specific only and not K11. Okay, perfect. So we proved it, but that was only on protein level. Uh, we were uh, curious if um, this switch we will also achieve uh, when we go to the phage level. Uh, for that, we took a uh, simple podophage, K11, and we played with the first RBP of them. So as you remember, we had to keep the specific uh, typical anhor for, for this phage. So we took all possible chimeras having this anhor, and we put... Um, all possible enzymatic parts here. And what we saw was that each time uh, when in this position there was podovirus originating RBP, um, then we could create the phage. Phage was infective uh, and we had the expected uh, specificity switch. So for instance, if we uh, were trying, where we were putting in this position, the K3 specific enzymatic part from podophage, we had new phage with chimeric RBP at position one, and it was K3 specific at not anymore K11 specific. But was it like this uh, all the times? No, unfortunately, uh, when we tried to put in this position um, a receptor binding protein uh, from cephophage, uh, we were not able to acquire the infective virions. And despite the fact that when we tested this chimera on the protein level, it was fully functional. Okay, let's have a look what happens when we want to play with RVP number two. And this work uh, was done by my colleague, Doreen Dams. First of all, Doreen uh, took two similar phages belonging to the same species and she, oh no, this thing I would like to move maybe. Yes. Um, Really? <laughs> uh, right. Yes. Um, so Doreen kept uh, RBP1 untouched, and of course, she had to keep the interacting partner, so this little blue thing uh, at RBP2, while the entire rest she exchanged with the RBP uh, from another phage, from position one actually. And she had beautiful new phage, so RBP1 untouched and a completely new chimeric RBP2. And what she saw was that this phage 
beautifully propagated on host for RBP1 and also on host for RBP2. So the propagation was successful on old and new host when there, while there was no propagation on the old host for this RBP. Okay, but of course story is not that simple because when Doreen wanted to um, treat as the RBP source phages belonging to different species than the scaffold, uh, another podophage not being similar to this phage or from cephophage, she could construct the new phages on DNA level and they were beautifully propagating on host for um, first RBP, which was not modified, but none of them was able to propagate on this chimeric second RBP inserted. So what we learned from story number one is that we were able to many, but not all the cases, engineer phages and obtained switched host specificity when we kept this conserved and terminal building block and exchanged only enzymatic part. And the story became complicated uh, when we want to cross the phage species boundaries and maybe it will be all not possible. And shorter story, story number two about um, this um, C terminal building blocks of RBP2. Uh, yes, building blocks and not building block as I uh, explained in the introduction, because when our collaborators acquired the crystal structure of this RBP2 of uh, phage KP32, we learned that at its C terminus, there are two building blocks, not one. So a carbohydrate binding module and lectin domain, which are linked to the catalytic part. So we were actually curious why, if these two blocks are necessary, what is their function and what can we do with it if we can maybe transplant it somewhere else and the, it will bring uh, specificity to our proteins. So first of all, we took the wild type protein and we created um, truncated variants uh, where, which were lacking one or more building blocks. For instance, protein without lectin or protein without CDM and lectin, or we just expressed separate um, building blocks like CDM or lectin. And we checked if there was a specificity uh, and activity. We, what we saw, was that only variant uh, lacking lectin domain was still enzymatically active uh, and the specificity was the same as the uh, wild type protein uh, and all the remaining truncated variants or separate domains did not have any activity. Um, this was uh, also tested or an, on entire uh, Klebsiella capsular cell type collection and there was no specificity switch or extension on any of any of this, uh, of this truncated variants or, or um, domains. And let's have a look what happens with the phage when we remove these domains. So we took again our favorite phage and we removed one or more domains. So we created uh, a phage without lectin domain, CBM lectin and linker CBM lectin. And all these phages were beautifully propagating on RBP1, which was untouched. And there was no propagation on the RBP2 specific host, so um, the truncated RBP, unfortunately. So uh, what we saw, uh, what we learned from the story number two was that lectin domain is essential for uh, phage infection, but not for enzymatic activity on protein level. But both uh, C-terminal domains, so CBM and lectin, are necessary for protein activity on protein level. In general, uh, we learned that we are able to mimic phage evolution, and in many, but not all the cases, we can switch um, the host specificity. There are problems when we want to cross uh, phage um, species boundaries. Uh, there is a lot unknown still, but step by step, we are getting a little bit better understanding on the organization and function of Klebsiella FH RPPs and their uh, building blocks. And with that, I would like to thank two, two amazing PIs, Yves Briers and Susanna Druliskava, 
to founding agencies, uh, to the collaborators and to all people who were involved in this uh, study. And also I would like to only shortly mention that if you are interested in phage therapy, there was new study group uh, started. And if you yeah, would like to subscribe, they will organize workshops and conferences. Thank you for your, for your attention and thanks to the last session. <laughs>